Welcome to Reconnect, the podcast dedicated to sharing and defending the good news of Jesus Christ. That is, Jesus died for sins, was buried, and on the third day was raised again, according to the scriptures, for our salvation. It is through Jesus alone that we are reconnected into a right relationship with God. Reconnect us, O Lord. Hey everyone, welcome to an episode of Reconnect. This episode, I will be reviewing an email or responding to an email that I received from someone this last weekend. It's from someone named Summer. Uh, This email says, Hello, my name is Summer. I'm a woman from Oregon. Hi, Summer. My name's Andy. I'm a man from California. After reading about the Contradict Movement, I do have a couple comments slash questions for you. I do believe that you are contradicting the teachings of Jesus. It seems that you are saying Christianity should be the only religion on planet Earth. Dang. All right. Um, Summer, I'm sorry that you got that impression. I'm not saying that it should be the only religion on planet Earth. Uh, If you look on my website, if you watch any of my YouTube videos, if you read anything on my blog, you'll see that I have never once said anything like Christianity uh, should be the only religion on earth. Um, However, I do wish that it was the only religion on earth uh, because it's the only religion that is true. Uh, It's the only religion that has uh, a founder, Jesus Christ, who claimed to be God in the flesh, who performed miracles uh, that backed up the claim to be God through those miracles, that died for our sins, claimed that he would die for our sins, claimed in advance that after he died he would come back to life three days later, made these claims. Uh, it's the only religion that has uh, multiple, multiple confirmed prophecies uh, from texts that were written sometimes hundreds of years before the prophecies became true. All right, um, read Isaiah 52 and 53. I think that's that's a great example of that. Um, if you read Isaiah 52 and 53, I guarantee you when you read that, you're going to go, that's talking about Jesus, and there's no one else in history that that text could be about. And if you show that text to virtually anyone, that knows anything about Jesus, they're going to say that text is about Jesus. But that text was written 700 years before Jesus, all right? And part of that text says that the iniquities, transgressions of us all were laid upon him. Um, And it's through him taking that sin upon himself that we have life everlasting. So it's really good news that um, Christianity is the only true religion. Um, Now, here's something interesting. Um, I've never said it should be the only religion because I know that it's not going to be. There's always going to be false teachings, always going to be false religions, always going to be false um, beliefs out there because God has allowed us to reject Him. All right. However, though God has allowed us to reject Him, God's Word actually says, You shall have no other gods before me. That comes from Exodus 23. So it's actually God's command that there should be no other gods. So God's command is that there should be no false religions. No false idols, no false gods, no ideologies that still glory and majesty that should be subscribed to him and him only. No ideologies, no religions, no professions of faith that would strip away and lead people away from the one true God, which is the triune Lord revealed in Christianity. So, yeah, I wish that there would be no other um, religions, and God desires that there will be no other religions. And Philippians 2 says that when Christ returns— um, the first time he came in a state of uh, a state of humiliation, taking on human flesh, um, living the perfect life um, that we cannot live, and dying the death that we cannot die, so that we may all have eternal life. That that was his state of humiliation. But he's now in a state of exaltation at, at his return, at his second coming. Uh, scripture says in Philippians two that every knee shall bow and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. So if people do not accept him in this life, uh, they certainly will. Um, at his return, at which point, if they did not accept him in this life, it will be too late uh, for them to have salvation. So I, I, I do wish um, that the message of the cross of Jesus Christ is the only message, uh, the only religious message present in this world so that people aren't duped by all these false ideologies and religions. 
Um, but I've I've never once said um, that we should not that Christianity should be the only religion. I, I I wish it was, but Jesus actually said that it should be. All right, continuing summer. Uh, you said the thing is Jesus taught that we need to coexist with everyone on the planet. Matthew twenty two thirty nine says to love your neighbor as you love yourself. That's just one verse out of many of the teachings of Jesus that says to not persecute others based on the things that they have done or are currently partaking in. All right, um, I'm going to trump you on that one. I'm going to go to Matthew 5, 43, 48. It says, you have heard that it was said, love your neighbor and hate your enemies. But I tell you, love your enemies and pray for those who persecute you, that you may be sons of your Father in heaven. He causes his son to rise on the evil and the good and sends rain on the righteous and the unrighteous. If you love those who love you, what reward will you get? And not are not even the tax collectors doing that? And if you greet only your brothers, what are you doing more than others? Do not even pagans do that? Be perfect, therefore, as your heavenly Father is perfect. All right, so that, that passage trumps the verse you quoted. The verse you quoted says, just love my neighbor as myself. This verse actually tells me I need to love my enemy. Wow. And using the verse you quoted, I mean, love my enemy as I love myself. Wow. Um, that's, that's very, very difficult. Um, you said, do not persecute others based on things they have done. Um, things they have done. Now, I'm curious what you consider to be persecution, all right? So, I mean, I'm on page with you on this. Um, we're supposed to love those who are enemies, um, as Jesus said. Um, we're supposed to love our neighbors ourselves. So, um, I'm completely on board with you, completely on page with, with what you're saying on that, that that's what we're called to do. Contradict, however, doesn't go against this. Simply saying all religions are not true is not going against that. If I am believing something which will lead me to death, eternal death, the loving thing to do if you believe I am wrong, that my belief is wrong, and that you have a belief that is true, that will offer me eternal life, right? The loving thing for you to do would be to tell me I am wrong and tell me and try to convince me all the reasons why I should actually believe what you believe. That would be the loving thing. Um, the non-loving thing to do would be to actually go, I don't care if you're wrong. I don't care if you have rejected the one way to salvation, Jesus Christ. That would not be the loving thing to do. It's like, I don't care, and I'm not going to talk to you about it. And in my sinfulness, there are people that I do not reach out to and people I do not talk to about this in my sinfulness. I, that's absolutely true. Um, I've not talked to my neighbors about their faith. I don't know what they believe. Um, I don't even know if they know what I believe. Um, so I, I've not actually loved my neighbor very well, have I? I admit that. Um, but by simply having a sticker or website or YouTube channel and blog post and a book that talks about how Jesus is God and that he died for the sins of the whole world and that it is through faith in him that a person shall have eternal life and that any other ideology or religion to the contrary uh, would have to be wrong because Jesus has proven himself through and through, um, that, that would not be persecuting someone to say they're wrong. Now, with this persecute, persecute others based on the things that they have done, or are currently partaking in. Um, it would be wrong of me to go out and kill someone else because they've murdered someone. That would be wrong of me because God has not put me in a place to do that. But God has placed the governments of the world in place in order to do that. Uh, most governments would say murdering someone um, is illegal and the governments then punish that person. Some, some governments punish those people through death. Romans 13 says that we should submit and to submit to governing authorities because they're God's servants put in place and that they've been given a sword, right? Um, and that people that obey the law do not need to fear the government um, that wields the sword, um, but that they've been put in place to punish evildoers and reward those who do good. And that, that's typically what governments do. They, they reward or at least compliment or not kill or punish those that do good and obey the law, but um, punish those that disobey the law. So um, persecuting others based on things they've done. It's not my role to do that, but if someone else is... Um, if, if, if someone else is in a position of government and they're Christian... They absolutely should have to do that. If someone is a police officer and they're Christian and someone's breaking the law, their role and responsibility would say, you're doing something wrong. Um, if I see someone doing something immoral, breaking some sort of law, it would be my job to go out and tell them, hey, stop that. 
you know, quit that. It would be my job to report them. Get on the phone and go, 911, I see a crime being committed. Yes, this is where it is. Yes, this is what's happening. If I see my neighbor um, being beaten or abused or someone damaging his property or something like that or slandering him, saying things about him, which I know to be false, um, it would be wrong of me not to step out and defend that person. If someone is physically attacking my neighbor, it would be my job to physically stop that person. Um, I know some people would say just call 911 and let the cops deal with it. Okay, fine, whatever. Uh, But lay my own life down physically in order to intervene to save my neighbor. That that would be the really loving thing to do if I actually loved my neighbor. Um, So I'm I'm curious, like, on what you would say persecution means, right? Because... um, I like I think if you say someone's just saying if I if you think me saying someone's wrong is persecution, you're way off base, right? If you think me saying um Taoism is a false religion, if you think me saying Sikhism and Hinduism are false religions, if you think that's persecution, if you think me simply saying everyone can't be correct because their views contradict each other's persecution, you have another thing coming. Um or not another thing coming, you're just Way off your rocker, which is, I think, what this next line says. And I, I know I just said you're off your rocker. That's not the most loving, kind way to say it, so I apologize. It just came up in the moment in my sinfulness to say you're off your rocker. It's not the most loving way to say, to, 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 to speak the truth. Um, this next sentence, I think, is what I was kind of getting at when I said you're off your rocker. Okay, so, or maybe you're just out of sorts. Here you go. It says, if you truly wanted to convert people to Christianity, you would have patience with those that do not agree. Shunning them and telling them their way of thinking is wrong is not how to break through to anyone. Um, are you shunning me? Are you telling me my way is wrong? Are you trying to convince me by saying I'm wrong? Are you having patience with me right now? Are you disagreeing with me? I'm just curious. So what you're um, telling me to do or what you're telling me not to do, you're doing against me, which is what I find almost the most frustrating with um, people that say you're not allowed to say all religions cannot be true because they contradict each other. Um, you you are saying, I'm not allowed to state my belief and my opinion, but you're allowed to say I'm wrong. I'm not allowed to say you're wrong, but you're allowed to say I'm wrong. And you're the one that's tolerant, and you're the one that's loving, and you're the one that's, quote, following Jesus. Does that Does that seem like you're contradicting yourself right here? Is this hypocritical, or is it contradictory? You fight over the definition between those two words and tell me which one this is that you're doing. It is very confusing to me that after reading the Bible and the words of Jesus that you think it would be wonderful if you could simply and legally replace all those coexist bumper stickers with another that reads contradict. I never said this. I see you got it in quotes. Nothing I said. What you are quoting is the opening sentence to um, the Gospel Coalition's review of my book. I'm assuming that you're getting this review um, from a PDF I have on contradictmovement.org. There's a link that says, what does this mean, referring to this image here, this contradict image. Um, uh, That PDF has an explanation. The front two pages are what people can print off double-sided if they want to go out and share this message, if they get the contradict a sticker on their car, they can print this double-sided, keep it in their glove box, and hand it out to people to ask, hey, what's this contradict image mean? Um, the opening line of that, uh, those first two pages says, tolerance and coexistence are both great. In fact, they're necessary. If we're to live together in peace without hating each other, or physically harming each other over differences in race, culture, sexual orientation, political views, and religious beliefs, we must have tolerance. I'm calling for tolerance. I'm calling for coexistence. It's recognizing that we do disagree, and we need to tolerate each other in our differences. Um, but as I go on, we must recognize that every belief can't be equally valid. If two beliefs directly contradict each other, both of them cannot be true, no matter how tolerant we become. This means that it is false to say that every religion is true or that every religion leads to God. And you may not think people actually say that, but people actually say that. Um, if you go to my YouTube channel and look at the Contradict playlist on there, you will see I got a video where I have George W. Bush, the president, as he's president, live interview on TV, say that Muslims, Jews, and Christians pray to the same God. And he says, there are many different, there, there are different routes to the same Almighty. 
many different routes. John 14, 6 clearly denies that. Jesus says, I'm the way, the truth, and life. No one comes to the Father except through me. He does not leave open many different routes. In the Sermon on the Mount, which I've already quoted from, he says, there's a narrow path that leads to salvation and a very wide path that leads to destruction, that many go down that wide path, very few find the narrow path. This is vitally important um, that people have the correct path to God. And Jesus says he's the only way to God. So um, George W. Bush, president, people know him as a Christian man. I, I think he is. I think he's just highly uninformed, was speaking nonsense, hadn't really thought through the theology of what he said, I would hope, um, when he says Muslims and Christians pray to the same God. Uh, there's no way the triune Lord of Christianity is the same as the single person, single God of Islam, who whose words and actions are completely contradictory to that of what we see in the Bible of the triune Lord. That's one. The other example, I have Brian Houston, the senior pastor of Hillsong Church. Hillsong, uh, the church that in Australia, which produces a lot of the contemporary praise and worship songs that are oftentimes sung in churches today. Um, I have that, that same video as a clip of him saying that if you trace our, our histories back far enough, Muslims and Christians worship the same God. Allah to the Muslim, Abba Father to us. You know what? Muslims never call God Father. They don't. He's not Father. Jews don't even call God Father. The only place in the Old Testament that I know of is in Malachi, um, where God is referred to as Father. It's referred to in a very wide sense of he's the creator of us all. Um, in the New Testament, it becomes very clear that people who have God as Father are those who have faith in Jesus Christ and are then children of God. Jesus actually says to the Pharisees, you are children of the devil. Oh, so very loving of Jesus to call the Pharisees children of the devil. But he calls them children of the devil because he says their father is Satan, the father of lies very loving of Jesus, right? Very coexisting, tolerant of Jesus to say the Pharisees are children of the devil because they are teaching lies. Very tolerant. Um, that's another clip. The, 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 the third clip I have in there is the Pope. And the Pope is speaking of 15 Muslims, 15 Jews, 15 Christians that are all leaders of those fields in Argentina. He says before them, the thing that we all have in common that makes it so easy for us to coexist is that we have the same Father up in heaven and the same Father here that we adore. How can he say that? We have the same Father that we adore? Not even close. They don't need, Like I said, Muslims don't even refer to God as Father. Why was he saying we adore the same Father? They don't even have the same God as us. They don't have the same Father. What's, he, what's the Pope talking about? So these, those are just three examples. I didn't go to like Oprah news channel, the Oprah channel, I could probably find every single episode or at least every single day some comment saying something like, it doesn't matter what you believe, all religions lead to God. Um, that's just simply false because they contradict each other um, in their teachings. Um, if they do all lead to God, then it means Christianity is wrong and every other religion's wrong, right? Besides maybe some that would say all religions are true. And then you're like, I guess that's the one religion that got it right. The Baha'i faith got it right. Everyone else got it wrong. Um, I didn't go to like Oprah. I went to sources in that video which were recognized as being Christian. It should be authoritative. The senior pastor of one of the biggest churches in the, wor in, in the world, the Pope, the head of the Roman Catholic Church, and George W. Bush, like probably the most outspoken Christian president that we've had in my lifetime. Besides Reagan, I was too young to really know what Reagan was saying and doing. Um, I was born in 81. Uh, so uh, th th this is this would be ideology that I'm addressing, all right? And that type of ideology leads people to the pit of hell if Jesus' words are true, that it's only through faith in him that people are saved. So anything that says all religions lead to God, it doesn't matter what you believe, that would be very problematic. And a lot of people actually do see the coexist sticker as representing that. And a lot of people that have the coexist sticker actually mean that when they have it on there. If you don't believe me, look up UrbanDictionary.com and see the definitions of coexist that they have. That uh, Urban Dictionary would be the word on the street, okay? It would mean what... Um, what what does a word mean to people on the street level? And one of the definitions there for coexist is clearly what I'm saying it is. That it doesn't matter what you believe. And they would actually say you're bigoted if you're going to take an exclusive stance like what happens in the Abrahamic religions. Um, so I'm a bigot. I'm doing something wrong because I actually believe something to be true. 
and exclusive to all other beliefs. But the person that says all religions are true, it doesn't matter what you believe, must shut me up and say I'm wrong. But they don't see the inconsistency in their actions and how their system is is inherently flawed um, by not being able to somehow embrace the exclusive religions as they actually are. Very bad. All right, so um, that's what coexist means. So the person that said this whole thing about it would be nice to um, legally uh, replace, if, if one could simply and legally replace all coexist stickers, the reason the person um, that reviewed my book um, whose name I think is at the bottom of this thing, Matt Manry. The reason he started my review of Contradict that way is because clearly Contradict is riffing on um, Coexist, okay? So it's riffing on Coexist, and um, he started the review of that, I think just simply as a way of knowing, hey, Coexist is out there. Here's a better bumper sticker. The reason he wants to replace these, I'm pretty sure, is because he sees Coexist as representing all religions lead to God. It doesn't matter what you believe, which would, as I've said previously, lead people to hell. So he's saying it, it, because Christianity is true, because all religions can't be true, um, because the claims of Christianity negate those of all other religions, this bumper sticker, which is leading people to think it doesn't matter what you believe, as long as you're a good person or whatever, as long as you're tolerant, um, would be going against the one way to God. And anything that goes against the message of God would be nice to have removed from popularity. That's all he's trying to say. Um, when people see this, that no... Um, Religious pluralism, as in all religions are equally valid and true, is just ignorant, as well as very intolerant. If the person actually knows the differences in the world, in, in, in the world's religions, um, would love to see this removed, just as God would love to see it removed, right? Um, but He's given us freedom, uh, and it would be illegal for us to replace them all, even if we wanted to. All right, so people don't do that. I've actually made videos, Summer, um, where I encourage people not to do what I call evangelism. All right, so I've heard of people, let's go stick contradict stickers over those cars that have coexist on them. I'd be like, no, that's vandalism. That's not evangelism. That's vandalism. All right, and contradict by itself is not evangelism because um, evangelism is sharing the good news of Jesus Christ. Contradict just says all religions can't be true. It doesn't tell you which religion is true until you go to my website and start to read stuff and watch my videos. Then you know which religion I'm saying is true. So contradict by itself doesn't even do what you're saying it does, Summer. It just says... All religions can't be true. Do you agree with that? Can all religions be true if they contradict each other? All right, so I am against that. I'm sorry um, if you think that I wrote that um, or encourage that. I don't encourage people to replace people's um, coexist stickers. I don't encourage people to put contradict stickers over coexist. Um, I, I don't encourage any of that. I think people have the freedom and of, of choice to put that on their car if they want. Um, I think that if they're doing coexist as a way to um, say all religions are equally true, it's it's really dumb. Uh, but if they're just calling for peace and tolerance and for us to get along, I'm for that. I think we should get along with people who disagree with us, just as Jesus said, love your neighbor, love your enemy, right? Love your neighbors yourself and lo- and even love your enemy. So that's uh, that's where Jesus would stand. So I don't think I think it'd be really wrong of us to 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 vandalize other people's property or to do stuff like that. And um, legally, it would be great to sponge all false teachings against Christianity, but that that's not religious freedom. Um, and if I say this belief isn't allowed, then who knows in the future um, the tides of change could turn, and all of a sudden my belief is not allowed um, to exist in this society. Now I'm actually persecuted. All right. Um, so yeah. I I kept that that review from the Gospel Coalition because it's a really great review of my book. I, I do wish he didn't use that opening sentence. So I agree with you. I, I, I don't like the way that, that could portray with me, but I still put that review on my, my website because the Gospel Coalition is a very well-known group um, that gave an outstanding review of my book. Um, and he actually continues by this um, saying, high school... Uh, teacher Andy Rasman has recently written a helpful book that discusses the problems of pluralistic thought and why Christians should remember that even though religious believers of all types should coexist harmoniously, he actually says that's what I advocate for, that we should coexist harmoniously. The essential claims of major religions stand in opposition to one another. So he just wants the coexist sticker removed because he sees it to represent that contrary beliefs um, are equally valid and true, which is wrong. And he says that I say right here that in the book that all types 
um, of religious believers should be able to coexist harmoniously, which is what the very opening sentence says, very opening paragraph teaches of this handout that you've probably read if you read my website, Summer. All right, I beat that part down enough. It says, Christians are persecuted because of things like this. It makes it look like you think you're better and above everyone else. I agree with you. I wish that sentence did not start as review. It's not the way I'd like to go about things. I'd really like wish to start by saying coexist and tolerance is great. In fact, they're necessary if we're going to live together without hating and killing each other or all of all our many differences. So I agree with you, Summer. But that uh, hopefully you've, you've heard it. This is not where I'm coming from. It's not what I mean by contradict, that we should destroy coexist. No, it just means we can't all be true. And you also close with also the fact that some people never found Jesus' skeleton is not proof that he ascended into heaven. So I believe you're getting that from uh, the section of that review that says, how can we know which religion is true, if any? Once you see they contradict and they can't all be true, how can you know which one is true? I wrote, to discern if a belief is true, it needs to be testable. The scientific method can't test most of the claims found in the world's religions. But science is not our only means of verifying the legitimacy of truth claims. In the case of judging religious truth claims, historical Forensic evidence needs to be utilized. Christianity is the only religion that has at its center a historical event that can be evaluated in such a manner to prove or disprove its religious truth claims. Paul says in 1 Corinthians 15 that if Christ did not rise from the grave, that his faith is futile and his testimony about Jesus would be a lie. If someone could prove that Jesus did not rise from the grave, then the resurrection would be considered a false claim and the Christian faith should be rejected. Yes, so if someone could find the body of Jesus, find his bones, it would mean the Christian faith is a lie. And you're right, just because someone hasn't found the skeleton of Jesus Christ, it doesn't automatically mean Christianity is true. However, let me keep reading from my... Form. On the flip side, if Jesus did rise from the grave, it confirms that Jesus' is claimed to be the way, the truth, and the life, the only way the Father, from John 14, 6, is true. If he did not rise from the grave, then Jesus was a liar and Christianity ought to be pitied above, and the Christians ought to be pitied above all men. Now, is there evidence that Jesus rose from the grave? It's more than just the fact that they didn't find his body. Here we go. The good news for Christians and all of humanity is that the New Testament is the best attested ancient manuscript in terms of the number of copies it has, the dates of the copies to the original writings, as well as the accuracy of those copies. In addition to this, the original Gospels were written by eyewitnesses or written by people who wrote using eyewitness testimony. This also means the authors were writing too close to the death and resurrection of Jesus for myths to have crept into the accounts. Other witnesses, both friend and foe, would have known if the gospel writers were telling lies and they would have revealed the gospels to be false. However, we have no such competing accounts from contemporaries. We do, on the other hand, have non-Christian authors writing in the first and second centuries who affirm the claims of the gospels and no one in the first century was ever able to produce the bones of Jesus to disprove the empty tomb that Sunday morning. Uh, so in addition to just accounts of this stuff, we have non-Christian authors that affirm what's in the gospel. So it's, we have non-Christians as well affirming this stuff. So we're starting to build a better case here. Now, let's keep going. Uh, the Jewish and Roman leaders and authorities had the motive and the means to disprove the resurrection, but they could not. So they had, so we had people that were enemies against the gospel that had the motive, they had, they had, the, they had the reasons to, to prove this wrong, and they had the capability of proving it wrong, but they couldn't. What's the best they could do? The best they could do was to persecute Christians as an attempt to stop the spread of the gospel message. Now, under persecution, did the people making these claims quit sharing them? They continued to proclaim the risen Christ all the way to their martyrdom. If the account of Jesus' resurrection that originated with the apostles is a lie, it would mean that they chose to die gruesome deaths instead of exposing the hoax that they created. So if they were lying about this message, they would say, uh, psych, we're making it up. All right. Uh, many might die for what they think is true, but who would die for what they know is a lie? There's a lot more evidence besides just that. All right. Um, that I could give. Um, it's in chapters four and five of my book, Contradict Summer. I recommend that you get it or respond to this email and I'll give you a PDF of those two chapters for you to read. Okay. I'll even throw in chapter six, uh, which is, I think, even more icing on the cake than just the historical evidence uh, for the resurrection of Jesus Christ. So it's not just that his body wasn't found. It's that the people that claimed his body, that his body was missing, right? He did die a public death. He was buried. Romans knew where he was buried. Jews knew where he was buried. Uh, Christians knew where he was buried. There's an empty tomb. If there wasn't an empty tomb, they would have said, well, this is the tomb. It's full. But there was an empty tomb that Romans, Jews, and Christians would have known about where it was. So where did the body go? And then all of a sudden you get people that claim the body actually wasn't stolen. It wasn't misplaced. 
We saw Jesus back from the dead, and those same people that made that claim were all willing to die for the message. Not one of them, but all of them that made the that, that made that initial claim. Why would they, the originators of the claim, keep to that claim if what they were saying was a lie? Why? Please tell me why. So it's way more than just the skeleton was Jesus was never found, therefore Christianity must be true. There's way more to it. There's also fulfilled prophecy, all sorts of other great stuff that's uh, going there um, that would help make it true. All right. Um, so, Summer, that's uh, that's the answer to your email. Hopefully, you don't mind having uh, listened to this thirty minute um, ramble that I put together to respond to your email here that I printed out. I've been reading off. All right, um, listeners, if you're gonna keep listening to this episode, uh, the second portion is going to be YouTube videos that I've spliced together. One of Paul Joseph Watson, pretty much talking about kind of this sort of thing. If you disagree with the liberal machine, we will shut you down. You're a bigot and blah, 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 blah. You're a xenophobe. You're a Nazi and et cetera. We're going to censor you. We're going to tell you to shut up. Um, but as long as you're liberal and think all roads are cool and sing kumbaya, despite the fact that there are certain religions that – or one particular religion that says kill the infidels wherever you find them, and their founder certainly did such himself, and his immediate followers after did such themselves – um, so if people doing that are not misinterpreting the text. They're actually doing what their founder did. Um, you know, if you, if you speak out against that stuff, you're a hateful bigot. We're going to shut you down. We're going to censor you. So that's a video of Joe Paul, uh, Paul Joseph Watson sharing that. I have another video that I just thought was really cool that YouTube suggested. And then I'll close with, uh, um, a video of mine that speaks on coexist and sort of the absurdity of coexist. You've seen a wonderful spinoff on coexist, which is spelling coexist with DC and Marvel images and other sci-fi fantasy fanboy fangirl uh, franchise images. All right, guys. So that's up for you in part two. Um, some YouTube videos I downloaded and put an audio format and spliced in here. Everyone, God bless you. And remember, it's peace that comes through Jesus Christ who alone reconnects us with God. Hey, sorry, I forgot to add this little bit. The Paul Joseph Watson video that comes on after this little break commercial is, um, well, contains a few swear words. I don't know if the guy's Christian. I assume he's not. Um, He drops a few few F words, I think. I think it's F words. Um, it's not too often, but he drops them periodically. So that is in the first audio track after the break. So if that will offend you, if you don't want to hear that, stop listening, please. And, um, I'm, I'm one that's not, well, I'm okay to be exposed to that sort of things. It, well, I think I'm okay to be exposed to it. I'm rather convinced in my mind that, uh, me hearing that is, is, is okay. Uh, depending on the context and how it's used and stuff. And I, I get a lot out of his videos. I, I think they're really good videos. I learn a lot from them. So, uh, an, an F word periodically, um, I think is still okay for me to hear because I, I, I still learn a lot from his videos. So, um, if that's going to bother you, cause you to stumble, cause you to sin, something like that, please stop listening now. <laughs> The following is an excerpt from the Gospel Coalition's review of Andy Rasman's book, Contradict, They Can't All Be True. Quote, Contradict will help a lot of conversations get started. Rasman provides Christian believers with a great starting point for understanding and evaluating many of the world's religions. He should be commended for writing a substantive apologetic book that's also practical on so many levels. The strongest sections are where he offers a concise guide on interacting with skeptics and other religious adherents. Many readers will find Rasmund's section on the 20 facts on the five major world religions and 20 questions that are most commonly asked when sharing the contradict message invaluable. This is a solid book, apologetically, theologically, and practically. I pray it will open the eyes of many believers to the importance of evangelizing in a pluralistic age, unquote. 
To financially support Reconnect, visit ContradictMovement.org and order your copy of Contradict, They Can't All Be True. Contradict stickers and tracks are also available. Again, that's ContradictMovement.org. Good evening, London. That title got your attention, didn't it? Well, I wish it was clickbait, but it's not. Many of your favourite YouTubers could be about to disappear. And it's odd, because many of the same people who went ape shit over YouTube heroes aren't even talking about this. Basically, a bunch of corporations had a collective hissy fit because their ads were showing up on extremist videos. Verizon, Johnson & Johnson, these big companies, and they've just found out that their ads are being played before some pretty offensive content and they want it to stop. And to be fair, you can understand why they don't want to be seen as endorsing extremism. Because by extremism, we just mean ISIS. We mean jihadist propaganda. Beheading videos, right? Wrong. According to the media, extremist YouTubers include yours truly, John Tron, and PewDiePie. PewDiePie! Let us dwell for a second on how truly hysterical you must be to think that a guy who makes funny videos about playing computer games is a political extremist. <sighs> So the media is exploiting the contrived moral panic started by these corporations to pressure YouTube into silencing us all. So why do they want to censor me? Well, it's because... It's because I'm kicking their ass and they can't win the argument on a level playing field. So I tweeted, Twitter is a tiny echo chamber. I'm not sure the left understand the monumental ass whooping being dished out to them on YouTube. And it triggered a huge number of frothing leftists to angrily deny that it was true. Which is how I knew it was true. Even Vice was forced to admit, quote, Paul Joseph Watson is right in an article entitled Why the Right is Dominating YouTube. And it is true. Virtually every SJW or regressive left video on YouTube gets absolutely slaughtered in the comments and has overwhelming thumbs down. We're clearly winning the argument because most leftists are incredibly lazy and would rather virtue signal on Twitter than go through the laborious process of scripting, filming, and editing videos. Because their idea of debate consists of using minorities as human shields and calling you a racist. Which is not an argument, and not having an argument doesn't translate well to YouTube. So instead of challenging our ideas with better ideas, like it works in, oh, I don't know, a civil society, they're just going to censor us by labelling us extremists. Don't believe me? It's already happening. Polygon said my YouTube channel was part of a sexist and racist hate movement. In that Vice article I just mentioned, they say PewDiePie is, quote, far right, despite the fact that he doesn't even talk about politics. And that he's causing millions of kids to become anti-Semites because he jokes about shooting Hitler in the balls in a video game. And that's... Why Hitler never had any babies. Yes, really. In another Vice article, they say John Tron is making all the kids racist. New Statesman said my videos were racist in an article about who YouTube should censor. Along with all the fake news hysteria, they're clearly building the narrative that anyone who even hints at challenging leftist dogma on anything is an extremist and must be silenced. They're clearly conflating actual extremism, like ISIS beheading videos, with people who just have a different fucking opinion. And again, it's because we're crushing them. Their audience is shrinking. Their trustworthiness, especially amongst young people, is collapsing. So how will they silence us pesky YouTubers with our wrong think and inconvenient opinions? Well, let me introduce you to YouTube Restricted Mode. Here's my channel on Restricted Mode. Yeah, you'll notice every single one of my videos has disappeared. Here's CNN on Restricted Mode. Not a single one of their videos has been buried. Even though I talk about many of the same news issues as CNN. Same issues Wrong opinion. So it's bye-bye PJW. Here's Philip DeFranco's channel. Steven Crowder. Here's Alex Jones. Here's PewDiePie. Every single video is gone. Here's CNBC. Here's NBC. Again, they talk about many of the exact same issues as me, and yet none 
Not a single one of their videos is buried. This is the sterile, controversy-free, advertiser-friendly environment that YouTube wants. There are, of course, those who do not want us to speak. So you know how YouTube slaps an age restriction on your videos and it forces people to have to sign into their accounts to watch them. That immediately kills the momentum for your video and stops it going viral. And that's what they'll do with this restricted mode. They'll force people to sign in and age verify to see every single upload from those of us that have been put on the naughty step. It's coming. Which of course will virtually kill all our channels and completely demotivate us from making more videos. This all makes sense given that YouTube is partnering up with major corporations to basically turn itself into a conventional TV channel. And telling the truth is just not advertiser friendly. We're not welcome anymore. Google must walk a fine line between giving advertisers more control and alienating the massive community of content creators who've made the site a top destination for coveted young viewers. From a censorship angle, it will also prevent millions of young people from being red-pilled on important political subjects. Because they just won't be able to see our videos organically. And that makes sense because Generation Z is already leaning more conservative and the establishment is in a blind panic about it. Listen to what Google's Eric Schmidt said. Google can build products that move extreme content down in the rankings. Again, who's extreme? Well, it's me. It's Alex Jones. It's PewDiePie. We're all Nazis now. It should be possible for computers to detect malicious, misleading and incorrect information and essentially have you not see it. We're not arguing for censorship, we're arguing just take it off the page. Oh, we're not going to censor you, we're just going to make sure that nobody can see your videos. Oh gee, thanks. And there's already speculation that YouTube is deliberately unsubscribing people from channels based on age if those channels are deemed edgy in any way. If this YouTube age gate really does exist. It would explain why Leafy is here, uh, a YouTuber who has extremely uh, edgy adult content, would be losing subscribers every single day because the majority of his fan base, I would assume, are, are younger. As I said, when I heard this, bells were ringing. I was shocked, but that wasn't it. There was more to the story. The YouTube employee went on to say that they're planning on implementing this across YouTube and that if you are not in the age group appropriate for that channel, you won't even be able to search it and find it anymore once they fully roll out the program. But YouTube's a private company. It can censor who it likes. Yeah, isn't it funny how leftists are suddenly so vehemently in favor of the right of private companies to discriminate against people? But only when that discrimination involves censoring conservatives. Refuse to bake a gay wedding cake and that fervent principle suddenly washes away. And forget conservatives. Any popular YouTuber with any influence whatsoever poses a threat to the media's monopoly on controlling public opinion. That's why YouTube tried to pay off people to support Hillary Clinton. <coughs> Casey Neistat. That's what frightens them. The mere threat of a thought crime being committed. Words will always retain their power. Words are for the means to meaning, and for those who will listen, the enunciation of truth. So what's the solution? Oh, I don't know, maybe to remind YouTube that freedom of speech is a fundamental bedrock of everything that we stand for in a civilized society. Maybe to point out that it was people like PewDiePie and others who helped build YouTube and make it a global phenomenon in the first place. Maybe to make the point that if you move the Overton window to such a degree that a dude who is totally non-political and plays fuck fucking video games becomes a far-right extremist, then that poses a direct threat to any opinions that diverge from the mainstream. That completely chills free speech and makes everyone afraid of saying anything, creating a boring, sterile society with zero diversity of thought. And where once you had the freedom to object, to think and speak as you saw fit, you now have sensors and systems of surveillance coercing your conformity and submitting your submission. We need cameras. How did this happen? Who's to blame? Enforced totalitarian compliance with whatever the thought police mob demands of you. Or maybe you just want to continue watching PewDiePie shoot Nazis in the balls. Ooh, I never get tired of that. Either way, the die is cast. From YouTube heroes to countering extremism. It's all a scam. It's all a scheme 
by the failing establishment media to silence its competition. And if we don't get mad about this, if we don't get engaged, it will succeed. Fairness, justice and freedom are more than words. They are perspectives. Welcome to Fun Islamic Facts, where I share fun facts about Muhammad and the Quran whenever jihadis go on a killing spree. Sahih al-Bukhari, number 5068. Narrated Anas, the Prophet used to go round, have sexual relations with, all his wives in one night, and he had nine wives. Sahih al-Bukhari, 5215. Narrated Anas bin Malik, the Prophet used to pass by, have sexual relations with all his wives in one night, and at that time he had nine wives. Sahih al Bukhari, number 268. Narrated Qatada, Anas bin Malik said, The Prophet used to visit all his wives in a round during the day and night, and they were eleven in number. I asked Anas, Had the Prophet the strength for it? Anas replied, we used to say that the Prophet was given the strength of thirty men. And Sayyid said on the authority of Qatada that Anas had told him about nine wives only, not eleven. Notice three things about these passages. First, Muhammad had at least nine wives at one time, even though Surah 4 verse 3 of the Quran limits Muslim men to four wives. If the Quran limits men to four wives, why did Muhammad have at least nine wives at one time? Well, Muhammad received a special revelation, Surah 33, verse 50 of the Quran, giving him, and him alone, the right to break the four-wife limit. How convenient. Second, Muhammad would have sex with at least nine women and girls in one day, even though he was more than 50 years old. Today, we would call him a sex addict. Isn't it interesting that a sex addict who claimed to be a prophet conveniently received a revelation giving him more sexual partners than anyone else? Third, how did Muhammad's followers know that he was having sex with all of his wives in one day? How did they know he wasn't simply chatting with his wives? It seems that the prophet of Islam must have been bragging about all the sex he was having so much so that his followers could in turn brag about him having the sexual strength of 30 men. Our Muslim friends tell us that Islam is a religion of modesty. A closer look shows that Islam is a religion whose supreme role model was a sex addict who built a religion around his sexual desires and constantly bragged about his sexual exploits with women, a prepubescent girl, and his slave girls. So much for modesty. Hey everyone, God bless you. My name is Andy Rasmus. A lot of people know me as the Contradict Guy because uh, I wrote a book called Contradict. I have a website called ContradictMovement.org. I sell bumper stickers that say Contradict on them. And long before I started writing the book or launched a website called Contradict Movement, I was sitting outside at college campuses with a poster that said Contradict. didn't look quite as good as this logo that I have registered with the USPPO um, officially. Uh, but it was still a cool Contradict poster that someone made for us to use. And we were using it to start conversations about religious pluralism, and in particular conversations that were to allow us to present why we think Jesus is God and that he is the only way anyone is going to have a relationship with God. And uh, I get quite a lot this idea that, hey, you're going against coexist, blah, blah, blah. You're hateful. You're contradicting Jesus because he would love everyone and not persecute people by saying they're wrong for what they're doing and this and that. I kid you not. I, I get messages like this a good bit online. And so just to speak on coexist, I understand that coexist as a word is something which is factually true right now. Right now. If someone were to spell coexist with religious symbols or with male-female symbols or with science symbols, this would be something, of course, duh, we already coexist, right? 
Um, right now, there are Christians that are living. Right now, there are Muslims that are living, Hindus that are living, Jews that are living, Buddhists, Sikhs, Scientologists, Church of Satan. We're all living right now. There are people that are scientists and mathematicians, and there are men and there are women, despite the fact that some people are denying uh, biology. There are actually such a thing as male and female. Um, so we coexist right now. It's a given. We're alive, okay? So we're here on planet Earth. Uh, even within uh, a given society or community, uh, there are a, multiple, a multiplicity of religions present. There are male and female present. Uh, there are people that support and love science, uh, and there are people that love to do math, and there are people that love to read books and are supporting literature. Uh, so I don't know why Coexist went and did the whole E equals MC squared as part of their uh, current little image. So anyway, so we're all for coexistence. It happens. Uh, but some people think coexistence means all religions should be equally valid and true. Uh, that you should not say another religion is wrong because that would be bigoted or xenophobic or homophobic or who knows what, right? Whatever sort of thing they want to label on us now as conservatives. I've heard Nazi quite a bit. So here's a nice little comeback to that. I've seen some spinoffs on coexistence that instead of using religious symbols and science symbols and gender symbols. They use uh, symbols uh, to spell coexist that represent various fantasy fanboy. Oh, I just said fanboy. I hope I didn't trigger the fangirls out there. Uh, trigger the little fanboy uh, cl clicks, all right? So they spell coexist using alien franchise, Star Wars franchise symbols, uh, Doctor Who, Lord of the Rings, what have you, okay? And so what I find so fascinating is that if you try to mix, you know, X-Files with the Star Trek series or uh, Star Trek with the Star Wars series, which, you know, they're kind of doing, right? I mean, didn't J.J. Abrams have a hand in directing Star Trek and then direct Star Wars? Is that not like almost, you know, committing the unforgivable sin if you're in those sort of camps? Uh, if we don't expect the made-up fictional worlds that these people love and adore to be able to coexist together, to have crossovers and spin-offs together without literally ticking everyone off who's fans of these in particular of these particular series. Um why should we expect people not to be upset when we try to mix and merge religions and say that they're all valid paths to God when these are people that don't think they're fictional? These are people that actually think their religion represents the, cro the, the proper view of God, the proper way to reconnect, to be with God, the proper view of what happens after life. When we try to mix all these together and say, it doesn't matter what you believe, just get along and let, have a cool spin-off crossover, coexist. Uh, we, if we don't think people can do it with fanboy stuff, fictional worlds that they love and hold dear, why do we think it should happen with religions? Why do we think it's even possible? Of course, in a fictional world, anyone should be able to make up some stuff and go, oh, well, we changed something, you know, to make these two worlds compatible, these two fictional worlds compatible. Why do we think people should be chill with doing it with religions and saying that Muslims and Christians worship the same God? Really? We should be fine with that? There's another sticker did the same sort of thing, but instead of, uh, you know, the fanboy stuff of all the different various, you know, sci-fi fantasy franchises that are out there now, uh, they did it with spelling coexist using symbols that would represent various DC and Marvel characters. Do you think there's ever going to be a Marvel Cinematic Universe crossover with Ben Affleck being Batman? <sighs> yeah, right. That's not going to happen. And if they ever try to do it, the fans were gonna the fan the, the true fans are gonna be livid. The true fans, right? So um, any true adherent to any of these religions would be ticked off highly if they try to cut them cut out the things that are sacred and dear within the religion and say it doesn't matter. All religions are one. All religions that teach the same thing. If you're gonna try to make Islam and Christianity teach the same thing, you're gonna have to cut Jesus completely out of the religion. How's that for coexist, Christians? Get rid of everything that Jesus ever said so you can be Muslim. And the Muslims would be like, what? 
You're going to have to get rid of everything Muhammad ever said, almost, if I'm going to be Christian or have the, or have the same beliefs as Christians. Come on, coexist. That's the most intolerant thing ever if you're actually trying to mean all religions are equally valid and true and that you should not care what you believe if you are having a co coexist sticker. Subscribe to my channel, please, if you like to hear me rant on stuff like this. Peace and God bless. Your mission, if you choose to accept it, share this episode on all of your social media sites and with your email contacts, people who will benefit from listening to the show. Thank you for listening. Reconnect us, O oh Lord.